reminisce a little about the people. <laughs> We're going to recreate a typical evening <sighs> and how people talk. And, and since we're to you know the first night, the first time I ever came here, the first time I ever came to this place was with Edie Sedgwick, who's uh, who's dead now, as everybody knows, she's yeah. dead. And we came in, and I walked in, and we went and we sat down, and then I got up. And I leaned back, and I leaned on a huge pile of dirty dishes that fell into the jukebox and completely shattered the jukebox. And Mickey Ruskin, 86 to me, but for my very first night here. I mean, the first time you were 86. The first oh. time I was ever here, and it was the first time I was 86, was the first time I was ever here, the only time I was ever 86. The following night, I came in wearing a platinum blonde wig, shoulder-length wig as a disguise. And, and Mickey was so amused by that. But do, do you remember when Andrea Whips Feldman used to get up on the table and yell Showtime well, we and take off all her clothes? Well, the term Showtime was invented by Gerard Malanga. And because of, uh, one night, because Andrea and I had an enormous fight where she threw a table at me and she pulled off the tablecloth with everything on it and whipped it across the room at, at me and took off all her clothes and started throwing things and banging Well, of course, she's dead now at 24 or 22 or something like that. This is the first, Jim Morrison, who's also and dead. Many of the greatest people, Jim Morrison, who is here, He first all, groped me. He first groped me in Madison. Or committed suicide. Well, he didn't commit suicide. They had so much fun here. It's a Jen, little in fun. Fact, in fact, Elsa. I saw Janice Joplin here and I talked to her and I sat right there with her a week before she died. Isn't that funny? No. I don't think Jimi Hendrix was ever in here. Okay, so. <laughs> what? I, you have to get the dust, dust. All over everything. Oh, this is terrible. I've got so much dust. Oh, I should wait to do that. I but, hope they don't have to shut up all the electricity. <laughs> I wish Mickey would come. But there were many battles so here, nice. and, and uh, we hope that it's all going to continue. <laughs> you think so? The food is, uh, is still great here. Oh, did you, did you hear this? Did, did you read the article in Rolling Stone? No, it doesn't uh, It says... About the, um, the first thing I did was get rid of those fucking chickpeas, Don Saviero said, grinning savagely happily. Max's Kansas City's newest operator is to Mickey Ruskin, Max's original operator, what Bob Cuccioni is to Hugh Hefner. More of the same, only raunchier. For one thing, Saviero makes three of Ruskin. He's tall, he has handsome, gray-flecked hair swept back, like Cesar Romero, blah, blah, blah. And it goes on saying how he's a gourmet, and yes, how the, the food here is going to be so wonderful. It is. But well, Laurel Delp, Laurel Delp Reddison was so appalled that she sent a letter to the editors of the Rolling Stone that reads like this. Dear sirs, if Sylvia is to Ruskin what Guccione is to Hefner, then I must have been hanging out at Caesar's palace all these years and been too stupid to notice. As for the slurs on Ruskin's nose, I think someplace it says here that something about Mickey's nose. Um, Saviero ought to tr try a few less drinks unless staggering around in a maze of plastic tablecloths and shoving customers around constitutes good business. As for the northern Italian additions to the menu, they are on the same gourmet level as, and therefore make up for the deletion of, the chickpeas. As for the deadbeats who hung out every night with tabs as big as their asses, they were the reason Max's became famous. So Viara can have the space and turn it into a spaceship if he likes, but the bar that 60 or 70 major artists once banded together to save by donating works for an auction is long dead. That may be good or bad. It's definitely sad, but it has nothing to do with Soviero. He's just another maggot crawling on the corpse, which is just about as tasteful as your little blurb in random notes. Whoever wrote that ought to be awarded a weekend at Soviero's Max's. I know a couple of people who'd love to have it put on their tabs, a mildly irritated deadbeat. I, di I disagree with that letter, and I say that the food here is, is more fabulous. The king crab and the lobster is the finest I've had anywhere in the world, and the o new owner and his entire family When Taylor says anywhere in the world, he means Bayonne, New Jersey. Are extremely <laughs> sweet people. No, they are. They're very provincial. And they're going to, they're going to keep the red glow in the back room, and it's going to be as but wilder. They're going to hang a Tiffany lamp here. That'll be very Oh, that'll funny. be fantastic. That and be also, the music Brown on the jukebox is better than ever. It's, at least it's been and changed finally after 10 years of the same music but uh, 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 but even so something is something is going to change when, when but that everyone's been 86 you're the only one who hasn't been 86 everyone's been thrown out of here all the regular customers oh yes there's a Lauren th there's, boyfriend was now there's a out. famous story about when when Mickey Ruskin 86 Janice Joplin and then someone told him who she was and he went looking all over the village to apologize to her and Oh Amazing. really? Yeah. One, you know who he, th he threw out? He threw out. Who was the guy in Lawrence of Arabia? What's his name? That actor? Peter O'Toole. He threw out Peter O'Toole. Well, everyone has thrown out Peter O'Toole. Who else did he throw out? He threw out. 
But you know, do you know, the, new, do you know the new, the new, the new <laughs> owner, uh, the new owner of Maxis from when he was uh, in in uh, the country when he when he lived in the Berkshires? Because no. he was a, he was a, pr a provincial celebrity in the Berkshires before he came to become a provincial I'm celebrity sure. in New York. Um, and how about, mm -hmm. where, where did you crawl out of the wall? <laughs> well, no, I never. I wasn't eighty six. I wasn't eighty six. I. One night, though, I was talking, there was a new bartender here, and I went and introduced myself to him. And I started talking to him, and it was, hey, the place had just closed. And Donaldo, the new owner, came up to me. And I'd heard that he'd been doing this to people, and he put his hands on me like that. To get, and all of a sudden, there was this big nigger in between us who said, um, Manny, he's the manager, and he's a, really adorable. He likes me very much. And I said, well, I'm never coming back here again because, you know, um, I've you know, been thrown out of the best places in the world. I'm not about to be thrown out of the worst. Okay. This is the kind of dishy talk that went on back here and, and made revolution in New York social circles, quasi-social circles. It was revolting in New York. A reputation could be made or broken in this room, uh, under uh, this lamp. <laughs> Uh, uh, Viva threw a plate of, of God knows what across the room at, at Lady Von Plupel from Lower Hampshire, England. And well, this is this is right here, is the table that um, who was the guy who won the Academy Award for Bonnie and Claude, the Claude of Bonnie and Claude. Oh, but, uh, what's his uh, name? <laughs> Dorian Gray. No, no, no. What's his name? What's his name, Anton? Michael Pollard. Michael Pollard. Michael Pollard. That's this the table he fell in. He just had run on this corner. Oh, he's fallen over every table in this room, Michael Pollard. He's one of the great table fallers of all time. And that, that's Faye Dunaway. I sat with her at this table. Alice Cooper and I always used to sit at that table and talk. Huh? Andy's table was over, was, was opposite. The table. opposite. No, the, the round corner. table. Round, round table, where he could watch. And, and we all ran up bills on Andy, except for me, because I thought I could get cash out of him. Uh, but the, he, he let people charge thousands and thousands of dollars That's to him. And he true. gave, it is so true. It is so true. He didn't invest <laughs> them. That was their only pay. That was their only pay for the movie. That was the only pay for the movie. <laughs> but don't be campy. You're <laughs> Now be serious. They'll create a typical party that went on here. Uh, well, no, but uh, the, the night. night that went on, what, what, create, what went on in this life? <laughs> well, this is. This. <laughs> Come on, I'll make a cunt out of your pot belly and rim it. <laughs> Under the new plastic tablecloth. These tablecloths, by the way, used to be cloth. They were tablecloths, now they're table plastic. <sighs> but what? No, because the night before Andy Warhol was shot, we were sitting over there, and we tape recorded the whole thing, and I hadn't spoken with him, and we had a big fight. I hadn't spoken with him for six months. It was the strangest thing, and I was sitting at this table, because we never sit at the same table, and he sent a bottle of champagne over. And I said, oh, it's, we've been feuding too long, and I went and I sat down, and Bridget was there, and a whole lot of other people, Paul, Fred, and we sat, and we had the most amazing night, and he tape recorded the whole thing right there. Oh, it lasted hours. And I had and I had the first day of shooting for, um, I was supposed to be in Midnight Cowboys. And it was supposed to be at, at 7 o'clock, no, this is true, at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I was at that table till like 5 o'clock, because they just closed the place around us. And when I, I woke up and I had missed the first day of shooting. I woke up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I, because of it, I missed my first day of shooting for Midnight Cowboys. It was thrown out of the movie. <laughs> what other interests? Anecdotes you have. Who the hell are you? <laughs> we happen to be in the 800 club. We each owe more than $800 here. Well, we, but we used to be stars. What do you mean? We used That's to be all. big star. We're not just debtors. <laughs> we used to be stars. And before, before well, anyway, we're. But they're getting rid of us here. Now they are. Well, not you because you're a sycophant. <laughs> <laughs> Cut me. Look, that's real red. red. Oh, you cut me in your that, mad campiness. That's because you're so delicate. That's because you're so rough. How many times have you been 86 from here? Never, except that one for the first time. Even that time that, that, that Sovier put his hand on. Then that Manny tried, tried to calm me down because he, he liked me so much and wanted me to keep it. He gave me a charge account here. Oh. I owe, owe $1,200. <laughs> the conversation is usually... <laughs> There usually is not much conversation here. It's usually just dishing. What do you mean? You usually sit there in a drug stupor and dishing and the, the other table, or taking the, your clothes off, or wrestling, or, or trying to 
prevent Michael Fowler, F Pollard from hitting his head on a table when he falls down. We are trying to prevent Rene from... S Rene used to try to swing on this Dan Flavin. And I then he'd say, he'd hang his underwear up there, and then, then he'd pretend to be swinging on it. He'd say, go get Mickey Ruskin and, and tell him I'm, I'm pulling down the Dan Flavin. And Mickey would come in. And <laughs> <laughs> this thing is worth about fifteen or twenty thousand dollars by the way it's been here for about ten years a uh, hundred dollars it could be duplicated exactly but i think they're going to hang a tiffany lamp to give the place more of a village oh, wow, that'll be greater but, yeah, i think so don't you think it'd be nice yeah it'd be nice then they could they could start having that sort of off-broadway crowd come yeah. to me i i don't believe you. that, that uh, things change that much just because you take out some all the but this was quite quite a sensation it's dan flavin's best work well, it was it's, a, it's his most sim, uh, a significant work because it, it gave a mood to the all the people that came here gave a crazy uh, kind of primitive bonfire mood one night there was this girl here, and I said, I said, oh, that's a Dan Flavin. She said, oh, what? That light? I said, yeah, that's a Dan Flavin. What's a Dan Flavin? And I said, oh, well, he's a famous artist. That's a famous sculpture. That's worth, that's worth $15,000. But they're, but they're going to died. bring something and probably maybe even nicer and give an even greater mood to the place, I think. The, uh, the Tiffany lamp and, and, some, and some other red glowing fluorescent. Oh, something. candles. I think they should put, now they should put candles in little, little plastic that nets around the little candles that would be pretty on the tables if they can get around the fire no but candles you can't breathe when uh, there are a lot of candles really i can't breathe after i eat the lasagna here anyway <laughs> <laughs> well the kid but the, i haven't drawn a natural breath in ten. well you shouldn't you should order the king crab it's Who comes the finest in the world Anyway. But anyway, this is my last chance to show my legs under the damn fly. You shaved them for this. I can't believe it. I shaved my legs especially listen, for listen, this time This is show. perfect. It's veneer tent. No, I used trouble. to sit here for for years trying to get customers <laughs> to come home with me. And it never worked. Between these two it legs is the actual I'll entrance you, to the back room. This, this is <laughs> the worst place to pick anyone up. With it. You only came did here you ever to dish people. Did you ever fuck a You never boy? came here for did love. You ever, did you ever blow a busboy? If bus you boy? brought a lover here, you should forget him. Did you ever blow a busboy here? Did you ever no, I've never, I've never taken anyone home from here except on really? a couple of occasions. I've sucked and been sucked in this place. At this table, like I've given hand jobs. I'm just <laughs> 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 well, something's got to happen if you come here every day for seven years. Well, it was sort of like home. I mean, something would happen in Nedix, I'm sure, or in. Uh, in when are they going to take the Christopher down? Columbus room of the, of the. Pinkerton Hotel. It's, we should get some of those people. We should get Edie Sedgwick here and Janis Joplin and Jim Morrison and, uh, and Andrea Whitfield and, and, and Candy Darling. And Candy Darling. Be fun. Yes. Well, we'll be joining them soon at another restaurant up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all make that great big, the big back, Max's back room in the sky eventually. And I'm sure it'll be just as, it'll just go on just as crazy and poop poop a doop as ever. Except we'll all have halos. <laughs> Except we'll all have halos. We'll all have Dan Flavin, Flavin halos. And beautiful wings by Halston. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who created a scene back here will have a Dan Flavin <laughs> a halo, halo, halo in that little back room in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> right off Park Avenue South, very south, <laughs> right in the hell. <laughs> when were you first here? I was first here. In fact, I patronized Mickey's first three restaurants back through you the still owe money to the through the store? late fifties. You owe money to the from the Lower East Side to the. When did he have a place? To, he had that coffee shop. I had a place that had shop? big barrels of peanuts in it. And then he had Les Du Mego, where we all read poetry. We all got our. We all were we were kind of reserved there because we got all our our charge out and just reading our poetry. And then he went to the Ninth Circle, and that got a little bit wilder. And then in 1965, 
<laughs> he opened this place on Park Avenue South at 17th Street, and it's still great. Max is kind of city, and we and the we just you're so anyway, desperate. You're every, so afraid. You're so afraid that you're gonna have a place to go that people will stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so you say all the good things you can, just that people and, will keep and, coming here. And everyone, so everyone just exploded at this place because the, the. What would you do if people stopped coming here completely? You die. And it was during during the uh, swinging six six six. Sisties, sixties. Sisties, the swinging sisties. <laughs> the swinging sisties. Now, the, one of the new things about this place is it's a mixture of, of sisties, uh, sisties, sixties, and, and, and sexies, and <laughs> women and men and everything. Uh, the men and the women all have about. Uh, if you were a man and I were a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so sad. But where, where are you? Where, where? There's no place to go. I was at Spring Street, the bar at Spring Street last night, and all the old crowd from here was there. It was so. Oh, funny. I don't believe that. That no, place. No, too. Robin Brew was. But that place has not a nice shape. This place. Though. Bryce Marden was there. That's Frosty too Mars cramped. That's too cramped, and and I don't think they'll let me charge there either. Well, what's so good that's about so this place is that you get to make all these entrances as you enter. When you enter the front door, you make a big entrance in the bar, and everybody goes, ah! and then when you go, you can walk down the middle room, and everybody sees you, and you can see everybody sitting there. And then you come in the back room, and everybody goes, ah! and they I'm see just you. grateful they changed the records, and for the king crab. You're always so drunk. How can you not you even notice? I guess that's well, <laughs> because I, the. The pills we got in the 60s and all that other junk. <laughs> oh, I took a Dormadina last night. Nobody had it. Nobody. That's, that's what's changed more than the Dan Flavin or the change of man. You have is, dust in your is the, Your halo is dusty. Is, is your the, pussy dusty, too? No one's taking that much drugs anymore. No, Are you kidding? They needed them for creativity. Why do you think there were cigarette burns on all these <laughs> tablecloths? Do you think? From smoking cigarettes. <laughs> you can have some cigarettes dropping out of people's hands. People who take good drugs don't need cigarettes which ruin your lungs people who can afford good <laughs> drugs don't come here it takes longer to ruin your liver than your drunk dr lungs <laughs> so you should uh, drink more and smoke less and take more drugs because the uh, because your liver can be replaced <laughs> 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 but your lungs. But you can't make up. No, your lungs. lungs. There's only two of them. But your liver. There's one huge one. <laughs> <laughs> so drink, drink. How is this thing hooked up? I don't know. We've got to start taking. It. I guess I should unscrew these bulbs. <laughs> don't, don't, don't wiggle it. Electricity's turned off. How do you unscrew this? Go up, electrician. <laughs> I can't. We better. W we're going to wait for Mickey the. Mickey said, "Oh, go and We'll wait for the dismantling now. I think. Yeah, but Mickey Ruskin is very shy of, of appearing here. He's upstairs waiting in the wings, but, yeah, but like no one could get him to come on. And they, we got him a new tutu. <laughs> but I, I have to. I have to. He's very have... shy about appearing at the camera. But we have so many other sites to do. So they found, since I owe him about the most money of anyone, they decided <laughs> I should. No, you, you wouldn't know this from looking at Taylor, but Taylor is being kept by the richest white man in Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> you wouldn't know to look at it. Think, you know, his best days seem to be behind him, but that's not true because he has a magic in his thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Between my ears, you mean. <sighs> Should all the wait <laughs> for God. There, are, should, there must be a lot of other places we could go to and do this. Like this we should go where the old factory used to be on 46th Street. We could go there where there's a new high rise. We should point out famous, famous sites of the 60s that are too old. <laughs> show of famous sites from the 60s. <laughs> I know somebody who has the who has the bottle of pills that was found by Janis Joplin's bed. I know somebody who has a lipstick that belonged to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> we should really do. The yeah. 60s did not end in the 60s. They ended in 1972. Oh, the 60s are still going very strongly here. 
they, they, in this room? They ended when the price of Kualu <laughs> went up to five dollars a pill. They and reached their apotheosis the when the platforms rich record went up to five bought, inches. And kept buy, buying up all the drugs for already established rock groups when it was the new up-and-comers who needed them. Because <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't be up-and-coming without a few pills. Or, uh, or some dope. I'm getting a blind spot from that light. Oh. I guess they're not going to move this thing. So, uh, Let me go get Mickey. Unfortunately, I'm cold sober now, so I, I can't recreate the exact mood uh, that that was evoked under these lights and in this back room. Or that still is evoked, uh, especially if you have king crab or lobster. It's, b uh, it's better than in Maine, believe me, or Alaska. And and take a few qualities <laughs> or whatever is your thing and order some of the very good wine that they have here, and the bottled wine especially, and have have yourself some seafood and sail away. <laughs> and there'll be a new beautiful Tiffany lamp and some on some red glowing things to help warm the cockles of your brain. And then, if you, and then, if possibly we can repeal those drug laws. We can revive this place like it was, like like Candy, uh, Andrea, Viva, like they were all here at one time. Janice, like the place was just going crazy. Oh, and Mick Jagger and Bianca sat here, and uh, Poo Poo Laverne, and Choo Choo Love Manga. Does everybody know that it's and, one o'clock in the afternoon? And <laughs> it looks like the middle of the night. You should do one of your dances on the parapet. <laughs> <laughs> the one on point, on uh, point on a precipice. Uh, I think we should wait until until they begin dismantling. Yeah, let's go flounder at the threshold of ecstasy for a while too. We're going to flounder at the threshold of ecstasy for a while. <laughs> That's where people got their lines. They took them from each other right out of their mouths, <laughs> wrote them into songs, and made millions on them. And the people who gave the lines, the spontaneous creatures, became like this poor creature. What was spontaneous about that line? They became like this. <laughs> this he's been exploited. His A lines, shade of my former wit, self. His ready wit, his, his flowering Red personality my wit. has been exploited. By all the rock companies and the and the rape companies and the, and the uh, Marvel comics people, but you were never exploded. And he's left here like this, a bum, <laughs> <laughs> waiting to be dismantled. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, I don't have anything terrible to say at all. Who can say anything without a drink? I mean, it's it's one o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. It's, the, it's the middle, the middle of the night. <laughs> Who can say anything without junk? That's where you always sit. Oh, get it? That's where Taylor always sits. They say something. No, you're the great wit. You should you should say. They said that these come out just the way ordinary fluorescent tubes. I asked them. These come out the way ordinary fluorescent tubes come out. They said you push them or something. But I. I've sat here alone for six years waiting, <gasps> waiting for a guy. <laughs> Finally, I got a guy. What do I do here? Oh, Renee, don't. Oh. <laughs> I sat here six years waiting for a guy. I sat here six years and oh. never made out. Oh. And that queen there handling the damn flavor, she oh, made out like... Oh, this is ridiculous. It's too long. She would, she'd take ridiculous. away your girlfriend, your boyfriend. It didn't make any difference. Take them away! <laughs> she was called one of. Oh, the, she was one of the vultures that made your life miserable here. La vulturina. <laughs> vulturina. <laughs> La vulgarina. <laughs> vulgarina is now removing number two fluorescent two. Oh, I can't believe I actually do it. The They're very light. See how carefully he handles See it. See how buoyant they are. At least 50 times he attempted to destroy it and was prevented by, by passers-by. Well, now, like me and like my beauty, it is all historical. <laughs> Yes, it was. It's all from yesterday. Hey there, you have legs. 
Yeah, there goes the. They're all, I didn't know that. They, these are all different lengths. Th those are probably longer. Oh, yes. These are longer. How does it feel handling those things? That, like, paradise. <laughs> paradise. Paradise on Park Avenue South. Ooh, this one's hot. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Spread those pearly gates, Taylor. <laughs> Spread those pearly gates. Uh, come on, Taylor. No, no, no. Oh, is your pussy dusty? No, no, Raul. I mean, Rene. <laughs> Get that pussy juicy. Raul. <laughs> but I can't believe you never sucked a dick or rimmed an asshole in this place, Taylor. Well, maybe three or four. But you like rough trade, don't you, truck drivers? And you don't get many trucks. I hear one night you and Delia picked up from this place an entire Canadian hockey team. Because she told me that she picked up them and then she got half of them and you got half of them. No, uh, they tried to pull me into the cab with six of them and, and I r resisted just to make it more uh, 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 spicy and they let me re go. <laughs> they let you resist. <laughs> Maybe they weren't jealous. And they won, they won the World Cup right after that. Okay, so maybe it's better I didn't go home with them. They would, they, a bit more light, one more time. They would never. The light one more time. Put it back. Is this enough? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> okay, can I take it down now? Yeah. Want to see it, the light go out? Oh, I'd, l I w I'd love to be forced to perform horrible acts tonight. <laughs> really, something against my will. I want to do things against my will. I want to do things against my better judgment. Oh, I want to be made to perform crimes I didn't even know existed. <laughs> I want a ghost. I want a place to go to. I need a hot spot. I need a place to tap dance in. I need a, I need a showcase. All right, but let's tap dance out of here. The no, final tap dance. Who wants to tap dance on an empty stage? Da 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 We are the Dolly Stairs. Da 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 is that dust? Oh, look, it's old gravy. Oh, get a close up. It's old gravy. Oh, it's old gravy. Isn't that <laughs> it is. It's There's a stain up there it's from something. Disgusting. Oh, Probably something power. really awful and evil. Oh, it's a cockroach that somebody found in the food. Once when we were doing the moke eater here, we were doing the moke eater. I was. We did it upstairs, and there was. Af <laughs> after the play, there was this mouse. There was a mouse running across the stage. It was the funniest thing, and the audience saw it. They thought it was part of the show. Well, I did a mo little moke eating job once. Really, you ate the moke? You yeah. don't even know what a moke is. You think it's some kind of hell? That's one of the dangers of Park Avenue South. Is <laughs> <laughs> the tired old queens from the city? The tired old with their queens. Their hands all over you. Who steal your, the, your lovers? Who steal your best material? They'll steal your boyfriend. Come here with your friends. And friend. they steal your jewelry. Leave you. <laughs> you have it soldered to your wrist. <laughs> if you don't expect to give away whoever you're coming here with, don't come here with your lovers if they're permanent. Talk. My lovers. You could give them away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know don't what, come here with that age lover. You don't know what, I, you you don't know what I go home. You get, My lovers aren't sucked up. You couldn't take them anywhere. Are you kidding me? You'd be embarrassed to be seen with them. I like them fat. And you older. shouldn't come here with love you. If you come here with a good lover that you want to keep, who has it? Because there's lover. always someone richer than you are you, here. You don't have a good lover. Are you kidding? No. Who has a good lover? Show me anybody who has a good lover, and I'll show you someone who's destined for a hard time. Because Would you say that again? I think this is a pearl of wisdom. <coughs> What'd you say? I don't remember. Are these pearls of wisdom <laughs> it just seem to evaporate? And what did I say? Was it really good? If you have a world of wisdom, your pearl is a hard lover.
or something like that. No, no, I think what I said was I want to pull out all your teeth and make a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> this is the giddy type of conversation that went on here for 10 years. 10 days. And we'll probably continue for 10 more years. Make a bet. How much you want to bet? A dollar twenty. When were you last here? A week ago. <laughs> Before that? I charged four hundred dollars. Before and, a week ago, when were you here last? And bought every one a chinchilla coat. You used coat. to come every night, Taylor. How come you don't come every night? Because of... Uh, inflation. Because of inflation. <laughs> you just can't afford to eat anymore. <laughs> Because I'm not married to the richest white man in Newark. Right? Because MGM said if I put on another pound, I won't be able to do the remake of Meet Me in St. Louis. That's what they told you, isn't it? I'm on that diet. Uh, uh, and that... That's all yours. Taylor, I don't want to hold that thing. You're the professional. <laughs> You're the professional. Raconteuse. <laughs>